the lower tiers of the Millennium Stadium have been taken over by supporters of these two clubs. It's the short walkout for the third division playoff finalists, Bournemouth and Lincoln. Dragon will be very much in evidence tomorrow, but it's a sea of red at the Millennium Stadium on the first day of the playoff jamboree. Bournemouth won the toss to wear their red colours, Lincoln have had to change them to yellow. But all around the ground, the fans waving their red flags and banners. And hyped up for an occasion that they can hardly have expected to participating, bearing in mind that the very existence of these two clubs in recent times has been threatened. Bournemouth taken over by the fans back in the late 90s, and Lincoln, who were in administration 12 months ago when players had not been paid for two months. So it's a great achievement for both to be here participating in this occasion, and Robin Bailey, the chief guest from the sponsors nationwide is being taken down the Bournemouth line by the captain Carl Fletcher. So Brian Mawinney from the Football League meeting and greeting the players too. Marcus Browning is the only player in the Bournemouth team who's been in a playoff final before with Bristol Rovers. Warren Cummings and Neil Young at the end of the line and seven-year-old Callum Gillette Bauer is the mascot. Sean O'Driscoll, a real modest man, had to be press ganged into leading his team out. So let's take a look at the two teams. And Bournemouth is unchanged from the semi final second leg win over Berry. Warren Cummings has overcome an ankle injury sustained in training yesterday. It includes two players whose combined Bournemouth careers span almost 20 years, and yet defender Neil Young and striker Steve Fletcher could have seen their playing careers curtailed by injuries in the last two seasons. Fletcher is unrelated to the team captain, Carl Fletcher, who's one of three homegrown players in the starting eleven. The other's goalkeeper, Neil Moss, who's been away and come back, and James Hayter, the club's leading scorer, with 13. Well, they'll start the match as third division players, but which team will finish the game as second division players? It's the 2003 third division playoff final, and it's Lincoln in their all chain strip of yellow who will get the game underway. And off we go with the roof close for the first time in a playoff final. Warren Cummings with his first header away. And the ball's too long for Bailey to catch. Cummings, who was a big doubt for this game, he was sent back to Southampton yesterday, having turned his ankle in training. It appeared there was ligament damage, but they've given him an injection and hope that it will get him through. Interesting, though, up, you know, Rob, just to kick off with, if you can see that Ben Butcher, he's coming across and he's going to be man marking Steve Fletcher. Every time there's long balls going up front, he's going to be the man that's going to be detailed today to pick him up at every opportunity. Morgan's clearance, Smith and Cropper both underneath it. It's Gulliver who tries to clear, but it's charged down by Paul Smith. Gulliver, who's had his travels this season, it's the third lone spell of the campaign from Middlesbrough for the 20-year-old. He's previously been with Blackpool and Carlisle. Butcher's header, it's game, and away by Cummings. You can see exactly what's going to be happening as far as Lincoln City is concerned. They're just going to keep pumping balls high in behind the back four of Bournemouth, putting them under pressure, keeping the ball in the Bournemouth half, and then not allowing Bournemouth to get the passing uh, play together today, because that's when they're at the best, when they can get the ball down and pass it around. Here's Cropper away by Carl Fletcher, who's come through the youth system at Bournemouth, became team captain at the start of this season, he's also the club's player of the year. Holding there towards Butcher, who'll be a massive influence in both boxes. Six feet seven inches tall he is.
Stevenson unable to get the header forward, and it's Elliot breaking with it here. Hater, and he's pulled it back for Elliot, who tries the back heel. A cheeky attempt. It's a great break, though, isn't it? Fantastic. This shows you what Bournemouth are about to me. Great pace. Coming and breaking out from the to throw in here we can see to Lincoln it's a great header by Steve Fletcher look at the pace of Wade Elliott we've talked about him before the game this is what he does exceptionally well. running at defenders plays it wide to James Hater his cross in is a little bit behind Wade Elliott his control is instantaneous tries the back heel unfortunately just comes off the Lincoln defender and in the end his shot just went harmlessly wide but there's the threat for sure as far as Bournemouth are concerned when they run it this Lincoln defence with the pace that they've got on the side survivors in the uh, Bournemouth team from that which reached the uh, auto windscreens final five years ago Browning's attempt it's uh, well wide that was worth a chance wasn't it you know he's turned well in the middle of the park there got straight away it wasn't the cleanest of shots was it just went arms away but you need that that little bit of confidence you know in your play that you if you're going to get a, a shot from 25 yards you're going to take it you're not going to pass off the ball to someone else you're just going to take it upon yourself to get a straight away goal Season first that either of these clubs have been involved in the playoffs. Both have reached the final, but for one, the adventure will have to end here. This is Neil Young. It's beyond Hater. And header by Steve Fletcher. Got well, the big man there, didn't he? Steve Fletcher. With a deep cross at the far post there. He got above Ben Poacher and just couldn't direct his header down to his straight part of James Hater. Hardin veteran is uh, Steve Fletcher. He played only three games last season and then missed 11 months subsequently with a knee injury. It's going to be a key battle today between Fletcher and Ben Fletcher. Hater, Elliot putting the pressure on Bimson. Bimson is the one player in the Lincoln ranks who's been involved in the playoffs before, but uh, when he was with Berry, he got injured in the semi-final and missed the final against Chesterfield, which they lost. Well, it's important as well, because they've only got the two in the middle of the park. We were saying earlier, you know, you've got Gain and Butcher in there. It's important that the full-backs, Bimson and Bailey, push up and make it a four when they're attacking, or them two in the middle of the park are going to be outnumbered. Here is Mike Gulliver. Communication at the back. This is Bimson. Aimed in there towards Smith, who was shadowed all the way by Carl Fletcher. And the bad ball in, though, from Bimson. The run from Smith was good, but uh, unfortunately for him, Carl Fletcher had read it and just got his body in the way and put him off. Good, uh, left foot Bimson. Uh, might expect to see him later on taking free kicks. This is Morgan coming under pressure from Hayter. Gulliver. Knocked out by Gain. Gain, who uh, pushed Paul Morgan all the way for the Player of the Year award, but it did go to the captain. This is Cummings. Now Browning. Neil Young. How it came about with Marcus Browning got caught in the middle of the park there, should have passed the ball quicker. I think it was uh, Butcher who came in with a good challenge on him, and then Mayo showed his pace, and he's normally a full-back, but he's been pushed in a more forward role, and he's been playing exceptionally well there. Good run, and in the end it took a good tackle from Neil Young, he put it behind for a corner, but good chance here for Lincoln. Well, they do work hard on their set-pieces, they score a lot of goals from them as well, it's Vincent's kick. In uh, Mayo's direction, but Young anticipated it to clear. Neil Young 
Bradley and Steve Fletcher between them have almost 20 years of service to Bournemouth and yet both in the last couple of years had bad injuries, a knee injury that almost forced Young out of the game last season. Fletcher. Cummings offering the width. Well, Fletcher was uh, down and grounded, having got caught earlier in that move. And he was a key absence in the box for that break. He certainly was. Uh, Wayne Cummings, he's put the ball in where he thought was going to be where Steve Fletcher was about to be, but he wasn't because he got an injury. Looks like back injury as well. Just came in from behind him here. You can just see there's definitely a, a knee up there from Mark Bailey. He just catches big Steve Fletcher. Just see the knee into his back there. That was a painful one, but he's a big lad, and hopefully he'll get back up and... A wrap in the back of Steve Fletcher from Mark Bailey. One of those in non-league football, to whom Keith Alexander looked to turn Lincoln's fortunes around. He was at uh, Northridge Victoria. Fletcher still feeling the effects of Bailey's knee. Young's throw. Now Hayter. And he's won the corner. I think he could be the match winner today, Hater. You know, he's, uh, he's been in the goals recently as well for Bournemouth, and his movement's terrific. Well, they've taken the quick uh, free kick. O'Connor uh, pulls it across, and Vincent heads behind. Another corner. Browning forward, joining Steve Fletcher, who's still feeling that back cleared by Butcher this is Cummings oh, okay. now Butcher Clock had moved on ahead Bailey's ball rescued by Mayo now Gain and this is Bimson just got away from Mayo on that occasion Challenging with Futcher. Morgan. Away by Gulliver. Now O'Connor. Challenges by Kane. Top is flick. Smith up against Cummings. That was better play, wasn't it, from Lincoln? You know, he's got a reputation for being direct, but I like Morgan at the back, you know, he's been the player of the year, but the way he gets the ball down, passes it around, and, you know, trying to play the ball into the feet of the front end. Cropper it was, it came off, it was a good layoff. Just unfortunately for Smith, he, he ran it out of play. Smith, who hooks it across. Can build as a contrast of style, still feel particularly vehement about Lincoln's style of play after the semi-final. Well, Brian Laws had some particularly uncomplimentary things to say about the way they've achieved what they've achieved this season. Well, Phil Gilliver has just given away a free kick there, and that's an area you don't want to be giving away too many because the height certainly is an advantage for Lincoln straight away. Ben Futcher, you know, going up in the, into that centre forward row, and he's renowned for scoring goals. Bimson is over it and the chance here to show what he can do with that sweet left foot. Pulled it round the back towards Futcher. Well anticipated there. Now game. Butcher. And for, and for Smith and it's Cummings who brings it clear. Elliott. Loose play from him. O'Connor frustrated. Morgan. That's the ball they don't want. You know, that's just a straight hold ball through to the goalkeeper. You know, he's got to be better than that Paul Morgan. Either put it wider the goalkeeper into the channel that gives 
you know, his front three a chance of getting to it, but at the moment, just pumping it high and, and long down the middle, it's only going to result in one thing, going straight through it to the keeper. Simon Weaver, who's uh, put it into touch, player who was under Keith Alexander, and he was manager at uh, Ilkeston. Quicker to the ball than, than Smith there, and he just pushed him in the back. Connor and Cummings playing the free kick between them. So Connor's cross. Oh, header away that by Butcher. Browning was waiting just behind. This is Purchase. And Fletcher will challenge for it. It was well taken by Marriott under pressure. Ah, fantastic keeping, because he was under tremendous pressure here from Steve Fletcher. He showed he's worth the goalkeeper, took the pressure off. He's defenders there by coming in, taking the ball. Not by Smith. You see there, Phil Gulliver's having a word with his goalkeeper there. Neil Moss saying, you know, that's a ball you should be coming collecting. It wasn't one that I should be having to deal with. Butcher got forward for the throw. It's cleared as far as gain. Now Bailey. Dangerous one. Carl Fletcher with a flick. Elliott. Gain. Now Bimson. Mayo. Good move this from uh, Lincoln. Mayo's cross eventually deflecting behind off Neil Young. Keith Alexander, though, does feel the reputation his team has gained this season. It hasn't always been a fair one. Well, I think at the moment they're, they've mixed up, haven't they? They've had a few longer balls, but there was a good passage of play, you know, short passes uh, in, in between the strikers and the midfield players. They're resulting in a cross from Mayo, deflected off Neil Young's one behind for a corner. Now this is where they're at, the, at, they're at their best. You know, set plays is something you obviously they work very hard in. Benson and Gain organising the corner here for Lincoln. Pimpson shot in the end, they over, over elaborated. That was a poor finish to what could have been a you know, good piece of, of play there. But uh, Bimson up, I just thought, thought putting two, two minds there whether to have a shot or go or put a ball into the far post because I think it was uh, Richard Butcher who had you know, showed good movement to get himself into a good position at that far post. But you know, just unfortunately, Bimson went for the strike rather than the cross. Accepted well by Butcher. And now Cropper. Oh, saving the corner. Bailey here will try and hurl it in. Butcher. They've done well, Bournemouth, though, they, from these set plays. Because we know exactly what's coming. It's a long throw trying to find. Uh, Ben Futcher, but Marcus Brown has done a great job. He's just uh, protecting in front of Steve Fletcher, who's picking them up. Trotter's direction this time, almost got all the way through to Mayo. Well, it was dangerous play here because certainly Mayo's foot's high, but uh, the ball did come off. I think it was Neil Young's arm there. Uh, I've seen them given as well, Rob, but uh, on this occasion the referee decided uh, to, to say it was dangerous play here. You can just see his leg gone up, it certainly comes off the left arm of, of Neil Young, but the foot of uh, Paul Mayo was certainly very high indeed. A red streak in the hair from Mayo, incidentally. No attempt to uh, imitate Freddie Ljungberg, it's just that he is the only Lincoln-born player in the lineup, and the red stripe, part of their normal red and white striped strip. The colours that uh, their fans here today are wearing. Mayo, who has been converted from a left back to a forward in the last few games of the season. Yielded just one goal, but it was a crucial goal as well in the playoff semi-final against Scunthorpe. Well, I read in the programme that Paul Mayo was the new Freddie Lundberg, and I think that's why he has had his hair dyed a little bit. Maybe he's hoping to uh, 
hoping that Jungberg's scoring record here in Cardiff will rub off on him. It's proper. Catch his header. Interception by Gain. They've done well, Gain and Butcher, you know, they're up against it in there, but certainly it's a testament to their fitness level because of not only they're getting back and making challenges just like that, but getting forward as well to support the front three. Here's O'Connor. Carl Fletcher, Bournemouth looking long this time. Fletcher, who's just... 23 years of age, he was a supporter at Wembley when Bournemouth played the auto windscreen shine, uh, shield final there. And they lost to a golden goal against Grimsby. We know golden goal today. Will be a winner here today, one way or another. Disappointed that the free kicks given against him. I think it's a genuine attempt to win the ball there from Paul Mayo. I thought he just got up above uh, Neil Young at the back there. But uh, the referees decided to uh, you know, award the free kick again, so I thought it was very unfortunate indeed. Then. Here's Carl Fletcher. Steve Fletcher. It's Browning. Morgan. Now Mayo. It's Cropper. Away by Elliott. Of the two sides, Lincoln certainly have settled the better. They're trying to get the, the ball down and pass it around, which is a bit of a surprise, I've got to be honest. And Bournemouth, apart from the one run earlier on from Wade Elliott, you know, the break from the, the throw and from Lincoln into their own box, apart from that, you know, they've not really got into any sort of stride at the moment, and that's down to the tactics of, of Lincoln, which is putting them under enormous pressure. It's a just a glimmer of an opportunity there, and Lincoln grateful for the alertness of Morgan, who stepped in to subdue the danger. The Bournemouth get on with the throw. Let's encourage them a little. Young with a cross, Browning underneath it. No direction on his header, though. That's, you know, what uh, Marcus Browning's all about. Late runs from midfield, very, very good. He got good goal scoring record throughout his career. Bristol Rovers, I remember him playing there, Huddersfield, and equally at Bournemouth. You know, he's had a, a few injuries this season, and Sean O'Driscoll gambled uh, in his last game where he, he, you know, he brought him into the side because he knew he needed that result against Berry, and certainly that was you know, the, the best thing possible for him because they got the win. Sean O'Driscoll normally watches matches from an upstairs vantage point but the logistics here at the Millennium Stadium didn't make that possible today there's a push there by uh, Steve Fletcher big Steve Jason I just pushed them off the ball there was a bit of strength Fletcher who's uh, due a testimonial this summer there to play Portsmouth of uh, Harry Redknapp's links with the club. He was the man who uh, signed Sean O'Driscoll as a player. The Bournemouth manager has had a close on 20 year association with the club since then. This is Cropper. It took too long there, didn't it? Being Cropper. He either had to whip the ball in early or he had support on the edge of the box, should have passed it back to him. One of the players, Paul Mayo, was one of them that was in support there and looking to either have just across into the box. Again, marched into by Browning. Oops, and inevitably has 
foot you forward for this uh, free kick. He's played it short instead to gain. And this time from Bimson, the flag's up. He got underneath it. Close ball there, it wasn't a decent ball in there. Here's O'Connor. Cummings. Tries to hook it away from Morgan. Hater. Now O'Connor. Coming something to chase, but Morgan was across first. I'm sure Sean O'Driscoll will be saying to his ball play, you've got to pass the ball quicker. They're taking too long to deliver the ball to each other, taking too many touches. You know, playing against a team like Lincoln, it's all out effort. If you can make the ball do the work, you'll tire them out even quicker than they would do normally. And that's something that they haven't done, Bowman. Well, it's taken them time to settle, but it's uh, whipped across here in Fletcher's direction. Elliot was in there too. Ben Fucci must be fit because every time there's a throw in or a free kick, he's making that long 60 yard run forward. Elliot. Hater. Purchase. Look at that plenty back of the uh, a shot away. Ambitious. That was a decent effort, though, wasn't it? Good break once again. Look at this, the pace that the Bowman side have got. He's one-on-one -on -one with Paul Morgan. Decides not to take him on, just cuts inside on his right foot, tries to curl it to the far post, but that was never going to trouble Mary and the goal. Stephen Turchers has scored four goals this season, including one in the win at Lincoln in October. A win each for these teams in their league meetings. Both went with the away club. He came from the cross earlier, uh, there was uh, Wade earlier who went to the ball with Steve Fletcher and I think it was uh, Butcher as well, and I think he just caught a little elbow on the side of his face there, and I think that's why he's, he's probably got a black eye or, or maybe even a cut now. Soon back on. Pushed there by Dean Cropper on Carl Fletcher. After the ball had gone. in the Bournemouth goal, one of seven men they've uh, had on the staff who either could have or have acted as a goalkeeper this season. That includes an outfield player, Marcus Browning, who's had to go in a couple of times, and Andy Pettersson, who was on the staff, although he never played. It's been a position in which they've really been jinxed and they've had problems getting in cover for injured goalkeepers Bournemouth because uh, they were under a transfer embargo for a large part of this season. Here's Steve Fletcher. I'll tell you what, Lincoln have done very well, the front three. You know, they really have stopped uh, the back four of Bournemouth. You can see when Neil Moss is getting the, getting the ball from his goal kicks, he can't pass it out to anyone because the three are closing the four down so quickly. And also, when you play against this system, it's important that you get your full-backs forward. But on this, Cummings has got forward, but some of the others haven't. But it was Morgan who lost it out to Browning, and this is Elliot. Just tried to slip it round to Hayter, but Bimson comes to Lincoln's rescue. Came to his captain's aid there because it was Morgan who lost that initially. Goalkeeping at the other end from Moss. It was actually a poor ball, wasn't it, from Wade Elliott? Yeah. Great opportunity to find James Hayter and, and just under hit the pass. Here's Butcher looking for Mayo around the back. off by Weaver. Played by 
Elliott. And it's the second spell in charge of Lincoln City for Keith Alexander, who took over as uh, Alan Buckley's successor last May. And a year on, I barely believe I'm sure the position he's managed to get Lincoln into. Well, he looked very cool, Callum kind of collected <laughs> until just now, and he's just saying to his players, you know, get forward, you know, let's put this Bournemouth team uh, under some pressure because, you know, for this 27 minutes or so we've been playing, I think they're the ones that, uh, you know, played the better football there, been closing down extremely quickly and, and look more likely to score. Lincoln finished sixth in the table on 70 points, there were four points behind Bournemouth in the final table. It's only the start of the jamboree of playoffs this weekend. Cardiff against Queen's Park Rangers, one not to be missed in the second division. Tomorrow, Sky Sports 1 at 2 o'clock. Here's Steve Fletcher, stunning goal! Cracking start for Bournemouth, and it's their longest-serving player who's put them in a position of prominence. Well, what a finish this is, Rob. <laughs> the big fella there, the delight on his face, absolutely incredible. Wearing his favourite number 10 shirt. And the finish was sublime, but watch the run from Marcus Browning. I've talked about this before the game. He's off the ball, running, it's superb. Lincoln play to not pick him up. The little flip back, and there's the big man, Fletcher. Fantastic strike. Alan Marriott, no chance whatsoever. Ball into the corner of the net. And what a start for Bournemouth on the back foot for much of this first half. One great chance, and there's big Steve Fletcher to put in the back of the net. A little wink from Steve Fletcher. Many of his family have come down from Hartlepool to see him today. And he must have made his family very proud with that, his ninth goal of the season. His daughter is here, waving the flag. His wife's absolutely delighted, already communicating presumably with someone back home about that fairy tale start to this game for Steve Fletcher, the Northeasterner who has Bournemouth on their way. Now they have to hold on to what he's given them. Browning. And again, Marcus Browning. Butcher, Bimson, Hater. that was Purchase. Well, a new vein of confidence about Bournemouth, but uh, Smith letting his frustrations get the better of him. He's a little bit unfortunate here, I thought, as well, because he definitely went to win the ball. Marcus Brown once again getting caught in midfield. He's got to pass that ball off quicker. You know, there's red shirts available. You know, Cummings on the left-back position is free, no-one near him. He just had to play it to him quicker, he encouraged the tackle from Smith and he duly came. Carl Fletcher's free kick aimed in the goal-scorer's direction. Steve Fletcher, who will have been with Bournemouth 11 years in July, 11 months out with that uh, knee injury. A lot of people wondered if he would come back to play again. He has. And what a completion to the story this could be. But there's still a lot of work for Bournemouth to do. And Lincoln having worked so hard to get into this position. Not about to give up the ghost easily. Hater. O'Connor. Cummings wins the free kick. Pushing and shoving going on between Cropper and Gulliver, and the decision goes against the Lincoln man. Oh, perfectly right as well. The assistant on this side was absolutely spot on. Dean Cropper had the shirt and the shorts of Phil Gulliver. You can see, well, they're both at it there, aren't they? But there's a fantastic angle to see exactly Dean Cropper pulling away at the shirt of Phil Gulliver, and you know, the, the assistant sees that, spots it, and gives uh, the right decision. Haters flick. It's a difficult start to this match for Bournemouth, but suddenly it's come right for Sean O'Driscoll's side. Two men with a long association with AFC Bournemouth, O'Driscoll the manager, Steve Fletcher the goal scorer. And that's as animated as you will see Sean O'Driscoll. 
Because he's a very uh, quiet, understated, modest man, a former teammate of yours, of course. Well, his nickname at Fulham was Noisy, uh, mainly <laughs> because he didn't say a word. And he was the. When you look at players who you've played with throughout your career, the ones that you would say would never win to manage it, he'd be the number one on my list, and yet he's done an absolutely outstanding job for Bournemouth. Here's Mayo, pulls it back for Cropper. And Carl Fletcher gets it away. Cummings looking strong and purposeful. Managed to ride Bailey's challenge. Blocked by Morgan. It's Browning. Now O'Connor. Determined. Straight down the goalkeeper's throat. That was good goalkeeping from Mario, though. This is a tough one to take. Very good run, this is. O'Connor is coming inside, unleashes a strike. He didn't see that too late, Mary, because it's come in behind like Steve Fletcher, but it's handled it well. Copper could have been through there and the goalkeeper had slipped. But uh, fortunately for Moss, Gulliver got across anyway to stop Cropper going all the way. I thought that was a foul there from Dean Cropper once again on. Phil Gulliver certainly dived in there as Gulliver was to put the ball away, put it out for a throw. It's Bimson's throw aimed in Futcher's direction and he's got the flick. Cropper challenged. It's gone for the corner. Cropper and Futcher just staying in the six yard area. and gave over the corner kick. And it's gone right into Futcher, who's got the equaliser! Big six foot seven, Ben Futcher makes his presence count and Lincoln a level here. Well, it's a fabulous header from Ben Futcher, but what a ball in this is from Stuart Vimson. Absolutely first class. It goes roll over it. Yes, hit me into the back of the net, please. Absolutely fantastic. This is always going to be a problem for Bournemouth. Couldn't they handle the physical presence of Ben Futcher? Look at that, it's a delightful ball. Gets above Steve Fletcher in the middle of the goal and thoroughly deserved as far as I'm concerned. Lincoln back in the game. Tremendous header from the big lad. Well, he's the club's leading scorer in his own right now, Ben Futcher, who came into this match on 10. Level with Simon Yeo, who's one of the substitutes. Futcher moves up to 11. And he's not scored a more crucial goal than that, probably in his career. Purchase has given away the free kick, but Bournemouth have given away their lead within six minutes of establishing it. I think it was, it was important for Lincoln's point of view that they went at half-time with something over this first half, because other, up until Bournemouth scored, they were the better side. Heads started to go down slightly after the Bournemouth goal, but that will revitalise them and they'll be looking to get another before half-time. It's Bimson over the kick, there's a flag up this time. Offside, I think the assistants gave it. There's no way in the world you should be caught offside uh, from that particular free kick. You should be looking across the line, make sure you're in an onside position. He just scored one before, the last thing you want to do is to get an offside position and take the pressure off this Bournemouth defence. Well, when Cardiff and Queen's Park Rangers play here tomorrow, I'm sure there's going to be a bare strip of grass right down the middle of the pitch from where Butcher keeps patrolling from one box to the other. And Smith here is looking to get away from Cummings, Mayo is waiting in the middle. It's Bailey's cross. Challenging for it in unorthodox fashion. It's Butcher. Smith steering it out to Bailey, but beyond it. The second best at the moment, going to the balls. They're letting balls drop in the middle of the park, and Butcher and Gain are the first to react. And just seeing, seeing Sean O'Driscoll there, you know, he would have been hoping that his team, you know, could have continued in the vein after they'd scored because then they start to get the passing and movement going, they're getting down the flanks, 
getting crosses into the box, and then here we've been thinking, well, if we can get the second, you know, the game's ours. Well, it was a tentative start to this game by Bournemouth, but they've got the break of getting the lead through Steve Fletcher. They've not given time to rest on it and enjoy it. Lincoln, whose spirit has carried them through greater adversities than this, straight back on level terms. It's the spirit he's used to seeing from his players, and he's driving them on again, the Lincoln manager. He'll be delighted to the way they've responded, you know, quite easily could have let their heads drop, uh, but they've got almost they've got themselves back into the game, and he'll be delighted. You know, if even if they get a half time 1-1, you know, he'll feel that uh, things are looking good for them. Steve Fletcher, now O'Connor. Elliott. Away by Bailey. You look at the ball on the side, and the players are you expect to get on the ball and run at defenders. Wade Elliott's one of them, but he's been well marshaled by Stuart Bimson in the left back position. Harley gave him a kick and that's an area of the pitch that uh, Sean O'Driscoll will be saying, you, we need more from you. Here is Elliot. Hater, now Young. Hater again. Now, can Elliot turn on it? He can! Well, he had the goalkeeper scampering across. Well, that's better from him, isn't it? You're very positive indeed, dear, but this is about James here driving at the Lincoln defenders here. Lovely little pass to him. Just lets it run across his body, hits it with his left foot, curling, looking for that far post, and he had Marriott sprawling across his goal there, inches away from giving Bournemouth the lead. The enigmatic Wade Elliott, who was here last week as a supporter of Southampton in the FA Cup final. And today he's fulfilling the boyhood dream of actually playing out there in a major final. He's an enigmatic character, he was the... Supporters player of the year in his first season, he still has a big fan club among them now. Although he's been a little inconsistent in a couple of seasons since he first arrived. There's on the throw in out of Neil Young. And guess who's coming forward? Steve Fletcher has come all the way back with Ben Futcher. Running in front of him. Bimson. Now game. I'll tell you what, that wasn't a bad ball from Peter Gain. And Dean Crop should have read that. Just try to play a little one-two with him there, but he just got caught him on his heels. The loss here is immediately triggered off a move from Cummings. Hater, the lone supporting influence. Just slightly unlucky there. His first touch carried it away from Weaver, who slipped, but also from himself. That was very unlucky, but what a great word from Ron Borman. Warren Cummings down this left hand side. That's what you want from, from your defender. Breaking forward on that left hand side. Warren Cummings, who was a youngster at Chelsea. Six loan spells, including one to Bournemouth, before he made his uh, move to Dinkport permanent. Nice diving in, making the catch. It's Cummings. Watched out by Weaver. Closing down once again, and it? it's uh, Smith on this occasion. Paul Smith, you know, he's not given any of the back players any time whatsoever on the ball. Normally, Boehm will try to get the ball out the back, pass into midfield, then one of the full backs will get forward to support, get the ball wide, then you know, use the pace that they've got on the flanks. But Lincoln, to the credit, the work rate in this first half is incredible. You just fear from in the second whether they can continue for the, the full 90 minutes. 
Oh, Fletcher's back pass, Cotter not giving up on it. This is the moment for Neil Moss. Played 24 times in the Premiership for Southampton before his return to Bournemouth. Here's Mayo. Dimson. Game. Swept in by Bimson. It's an awkward one for the goalkeeper. And he's relieved to see it go on top of the net. Well, he's all over the place here, wasn't he, Neil Moss? <laughs> wasn't sure exactly if this was going to dip under the bar or not. Bimson with a cross, just overhits it to the far post. You look at Neil Moss, ends up into the back of the net. It's only a yard or so over the bar. Had it covered, though, to his credit. Steve Fletcher, now O'Connor. Butcher. Bailey, must have done it by Cummings. Not a fail for me, that from Cummings. I thought he won the ball quite cleanly there, just too strong for Mark Bailey. He controlled it, didn't realise Cummings was it, coming in from behind, just took the ball off and put the referee showed a bit of pity on him just because he fell over. Bailey's kick. Butcher! It was a decent effort, wasn't it? Certainly was, from Richard Butcher. Had the confidence to strike it from distance, and it came through a crowd of players. But Neil, Neil Moss in the Bournemouth goal had it well covered, didn't he? Here's the long ball forward once again. Just drops. He's only 20, 25 yards from goal. Every right to have a strike on his left foot now. Just dragged it wide of the goal. Pusher was the man who got the vital winner at Bournemouth last month for Lincoln that really got their promotion ambitions back on track. They've been unbeaten since. And they're refusing to be beaten here. Recovering from a one-goal deficit and they're finishing the half strongly. This is game. A good challenge by Browning. And the challenge from Weaver was late on Hayter. And it's going to be the first booking of the game as we just enter the two minutes of added time. Right as well from the referee's point of view because this is all about the pace of James here. Just next it round, Simon Weaver, and he's committed to the challenge. Uh, and you've got, you know, if you, if you go for a challenge in the middle of the park and you don't win it and you bring the, uh, the player down, there's only one thing the referee can do is show the yellow card. Here he is. Do you see Hayter? Just nicks it round him, definitely catches him. Uh, with his left foot there, referee, absolutely spot on. Elliot, now Young. Butcher tries to clear. Butcher helps it away. This is O'Connor. Oh, free header! Carl Fletcher! has put Bournemouth back in front. It's the two Fletchers who've scored for them. This time it's their captain, and so close to half-time, it's a precious, precious lead for Bournemouth. Well, what a fantastic time to score your goal. Skipper comes forward. This is about Gareth O'Connor, though, and he's delightful ball in to the near post. But where's the mark as far as Lincoln City are concerned? You can't leave a player of this quality alone in the box. Here's Gareth O'Connor, naturally right foot, wants to come inside past Mark Bailey, crosses in, look at that, absolutely free, six yards from goal. Carl Fletcher's not going to miss from there, and Alan Marriott had absolutely no chance, just the merest of touches, keeper well beaten. Butcher. Pull back by Gain. And away by Carl Fletcher. An immense goal from Carl Fletcher, his third of the season. He 
aimed in towards Futcher. Steve Fletcher this time, who gets it away, the two of them uh, not related, remember? Alexander be thinking about conceding a goal so close to the break. Well, certainly he'd be very disappointed with defenders before the kickoff. You know, he'll put the team sheet up, the bomb of the team as well, and say, so and so, you pick him up. And there, someone would have been detailed to pick Carl Fletcher up for situations exactly like that. You cannot leave one of the bomb of central defenders in the middle of your own goal, six yards out, unmarked. So all it needed was the merest of touches into the back of net. Well, he doesn't show up, but deep inside, Sean O'Driscoll will be absolutely delighted with that second goal. He's delighted because of half-time, Bournemouth lead, it's been the Fletcher and Futcher show, a double bill, though, from the Fletchers, Carl Fletcher, the captain, restoring Bournemouth lead after Sting Fletcher's goal had been cancelled out by an equaliser from Ben Futcher. But then, right on the stroke of half-time, it was a free header from O'Connor's cross for Carl Fletcher. The captain is the man who's given Bournemouth the advantage, 2-1 over Lincoln at the break. One imagines that Keith Alexander's half-time team talk was the harshest, bearing his mind that his team had got back level, only to throw it away on the stroke of half-time, having allowed Carl Fletcher, the Bournemouth skipper, to get free for the header in. Carl Fletcher adding to the goal from his namesake, Steve, bringing joy on the south coast, and to the Bournemouth fans who have packed into the Millennium Stadium in Cardiff. Good year on the South Coast so far, with Portsmouth getting promoted, Southampton getting to the FA Cup final, even though they didn't beat Arsenal here. But can Bournemouth keep up the feel-good factor in that part of the country? They're leading 2-1 then at half-time. The prize of reaching the second division is within their sights. But as has already been demonstrated to them, you write off Lincoln City at your peril. Each team in this second half attacking the end where their supporters are backed. And this is Cummings for Bournemouth. Butcher stepping in. And Mayo. Chopper wanted it played forward early. Oh! And unfortunate to lose it in the end just as he was lining it up on his left foot. No immediate changes made by Lincoln, but. Uh, He's a useful substitute to have up your sleeve, Simon Yeo, and uh, undoubtedly Keith Exalan Alexander will bring him on when he judges the time to be right. Couldn't really envisage him letting it go much beyond the hour mark before making that change. Here's Cummings pulling back across, but too long for Steve Fletcher. there really and played for the corner of Butcher. Showed some lovely footwork the big fella there. <laughs> a little bit slow in turning but uh, it was enough to get away from Ben Butcher. Just knocked it against and knew exactly what he wanted. Enough to get a corner kick. All of us travel to the near post. Here's O'Connor. And it took a deflection, came off Mayo. They've got to be better from corners than this, picking it up Lincoln City. They're, they're allowing, you know, James Hayter just to play a simple ball to a corner where no one really put him under any pressure. He drives at the defenders, goes for a strike, comes off Paul May on behind for a corner. They've got to be more lively in and around their own penalty box that they pick men up. Well, they work well, their uh, corners. They raised arm um, before this was taken out towards Purchase. Ah, they've worked on that, that's for sure, because Perch has actually started virtually on the goal line. Watch his movement, he runs around his marker, it's a good ball into the middle of the goal. See, he's got away from the, he's, he's mark, the player that's marking him there, gets his strike, never on target, always going wide. Paul Morgan it was, I think it was, the skipper putting him under pressure, and the ball just went harmlessly wide, but even there, you know, that could have ricocheted anywhere. 
There was a raised arm signal from James Hayter. Yeah. Purchase knew exactly what he'd got to try and do there. The execution didn't quite come off. Elliott stepping in. It's Carl Fletcher. Now game. A good footballer, isn't he, this Peter Gain? I think he could play at a higher level. I know he was at Spurs as a youngster, but he uh, looks very commanding on the ball, isn't he? Very positive, and he's running with the ball, looking to play a little one two off uh, his central strikers, and uh, has played exceptionally well. Oliver's clearing header. Yeah, just failing to keep it in. towards Crocker, but uh, the referee had seen an infringement. Just a little thing, there's a little push in there from Dean Cropper. No real re need to do it either, Rob, because you know the, he's in the opposing penalty area. One thing you mustn't do is give away a free kick and take the pressure off. Keep the ball in and around the box, who knows what you can get from it. Simon Yeo's moment may soon be upon us. The Lincoln super sub. Is ready for action. I think this is enforced one as well, Rob. Sorry about that, because I'll tell you why. Uh, Paul Smith had made a fantastic run to challenge Warren Cummings down in that left hand side, the right of, of Lincoln, and he picked up an injury and he was limping about. And we can see just walking off at the moment. He, he's in a bit of pain as he comes off. So this is enforced from Keith Alexander's point of view. I think you're like have kept to the team for another five, ten minutes, or why not make the, the substitution at half time? He is being replaced by 12. So Smith Simon is off. Simon Yeo, the former soldier and the former postman who's come on to score in the last three matches, four goals in those three games, comes on again to try and act out the super sub role. This would be the heroic act of all heroic acts if he was to pull this one off, it's aimed straight in his direction. Now gain. And a line one up for Yeo, it's cleared by Carl Fletcher. Browning, now Elliott. Good run from Wade Elliott, can he finish? It's a great run, wasn't it? Said, oh, this is when he's at his best. Uh, that's why Sean O'Driscoll keeps him on the pitch, wanting to pick up the ball, running defenders, impress his ability on the opposition and, and get a strike a go exactly what he did there. He's so good, they wrote a song about him, a Bournemouth band called the Bewley Brothers, called the Ballad of Wade Elliott, and there may just have been another verse to be written then if he'd scored. Well, here's the chance here, look, he's running from, from deep, he had hate to wide of him, he just uses him as a screen, cuts inside, takes on the defender, and then looking to curl at the far post, but Marriott had it well covered, but this is where this lad's at his positive best. Bailey. Vimson applying the pressure to Elliott this time and a bit of a tangle between the two of them. He's getting stronger and stronger, Elliott, isn't he? I'm sure Sean O'Driscoll had a word him half time saying, you know, you're a potential match winner, you've got the ability to run at Stuart Vimson, he's not got the pace to keep with you, you must get on the ball at every opportunity, be more positive, I'll give you the freedom to go out and express yourself. And that's here, you can see Sean just in there, get a bit of width on the ball, bit of play. It's Morgan. He's closed down by Hayter and he's won the throw in off him. Yeo's head up. Yeo was offside. Cummings. Didn't he 
the opportunity to run. Fantastic keeping that as it really is from Alan Murray. Very safe pair of hands, but what a run from this lad, Warren Cummins, down this left-hand side. So powerful, went past Yeo like he wasn't there, just trying to deliver to the far post, but great take from the keeper. Yeo just losing his footing. And that was a strong challenge from Bailey. And uh, the Bournemouth players didn't like it, and the referee didn't like it either, and he's calling him out. I think this could be yellow. I mean, he's having a strong word with Mark Bailey, but he's late here in the challenge, as far as I'm concerned. Goes to play the ball, but I think he does take the man. Well, here's the challenge. And quite clearly, you can just see as he comes in here, he's late, isn't he? I think a corner on the ball, and obviously the ball lad's not happy with that late challenge on the player. Could have caused a, a serious injury. He's lucky to get away with it, Bailey, but no card shown, just a warning. Still just one caution in the match so far. It's for Simon Weaver in the first half. And Steve Fletcher. Pursued by Futcher, as he has been all afternoon. Each has let the other off the leash to score, but now Cummings is becoming more of a driving influence in this game, getting forward again. Blocked by Morgan. Futcher. O'Connor tried to play it into Elliott, but in step Bimson. Even at this early stage of the second half, you can see that uh, the Lincoln players are looking a little bit tired, a little bit jaded at the moment. Saying here, you know, in that first half, how much work they put into that first half, the closing down, and I think it's starting to, to to hurt them at the moment, and that's maybe why Keith Alexander's, you know, ready to bring on another substitute. Chris Cornelli, the player he was talking to, there's a real risk there taken by Moss against uh, Simon Yeo, and uh, you just had to get rid of him. Yeah, it's poor goalkeeper, and then you just got to clear your, your lines to get the ball up front, away from your goal, just trying to be a little bit too clever. And it could have cost him dear. Back on the big guns, me and my shadow, isn't it? Butcher and Steve Fletcher. Browning in front again. And Futcher goes into challenge, and that time it was positive goalkeeping by Moss. He did well there to seize the initiative and come and make it his. Peter has Elliott moving on ahead, but everything's out to the right, there's nothing in the middle, although Purchase is battling to get there, and has Purchase! Goal! Could that be the goal that lifts Bournemouth into the second division? It came from a punch-out from the goalkeeper, they broke from one end to the other. And purchase the eventual beneficiary. The Bournemouth fans celebrate. They're three-one ahead. Class written all over this rope. Absolutely fantastic! Fantastic. Here, the keeper Neil Moss atones for his early mistake. And there, it's all about the pace, the drive of Peter and Wade Elliott. Look at the pace down that right-hand side from Elliott. It's a good ball from James Peter, but Stephen Purchase what a run from midfield and a first-class finish. Alan Murray in the goal had absolutely no chance. Got a ball back from young Wayne Elliott, picks his man out. And a volley finish, he bumps into the ground, it doesn't matter, it's all about hitting the target, making the goalkeeper work, and the goalkeeper wasn't good enough to save it. And no more than Bournemouth deserve in this second half. They've been the team that's tipped this match to this Lincoln defence. Stephen Purchase scores against Lincoln just as he did at Sinselbank earlier in the season. Lincoln have made a change, they've uh, thrown on an extra forward in Chris Cornelli, we saw they were contemplating that anyway before the goal was scored, but Cornelli is on now, player who's still a, a part-time footballer, has another job as a fitter of closed-circuit television, but he's been offered a full-time contract for next season, can he uh, justify that offer now by dragging Lincoln back into this game? It's going to have to be retaken because it wasn't a throw in, it's a corner. Bimson and Gain over the kick. Lincoln, for all the uh, spirit they've shown, 
needing the sort of comeback that Scunthorpe managed against them in the playoff semi final. That one's awkward. And Moss got a touch. Well, I don't know what he's given here, the referee and his assistant. I think it must have been a foul on the goalkeeper, Neil Moss, because certainly he gets the last touch here. Well, how he can deem that a free kick, I'm not sure. There's like four or five players genuinely going to attack the ball. I thought Neil Moss, his credit done exceptionally well to get the flick over under a tremendous pressure. But the referee decides to give a free kick. Well, this is the third final in this division in Cardiff. The previous two have each been won by two goal margins. Cheltenham and Blackpool emerging on top. Bournemouth have established a two-goal margin here now. Will it be enough against Lincoln, whose spirit is famed? Spun through for Hayter, just beyond him there. Well, they've made a change, haven't they? Uh, looks like they've gone up with four at the back. I think this could help Bournemouth more than it's going to help Lincoln City. They've got numbers going forward, but... Uh... Well, that's a poor kick and a chance not taken. Proper holds his head in his hands. It was a real opening. Well, you'd have thought Neil Moss would have learnt his lesson when he nearly got caught out earlier on with a back pass. Here, he's just got to kick through the ball with his left foot. It's not the best of Clean's field. Balls to Dean Cropper, he's had a strike at goal. I tell you what, that's on target, that's the goal, but just gets too much on the ball and it just takes it over the bar. Just a touch of quality there from Cropper and Bournemouth could have had a very embarrassed goalkeeper. Last turn round from Browning. Good surging run and another goal! O'Connor! is the hero for Bournemouth and surely now this spells promotion well that's what happens when you take the gamble bringing on another strike and taking off a defending Simon Weaver and this is all about the drive of Gareth O'Connor drives and Ben Fisher takes him on shows a, a good change of pace here to take him away from Bush it's good work in the first place from Steve Fletcher holds the ball up Passes the ball down the left-hand side, here he drives at Butcher, just takes it past him. Butcher can't move his feet quickly enough, hits it across the goalkeeper, Alan Murray, into the corner of the net, and it's one-way traffic now as Bournemouth go 4-1 up. Gareth O'Connor moves into double figures for the season with that devastating finish. And Bournemouth now, surely just... Half an hour away from being in the second division. It will be one heck of a comeback now if, to, if Lincoln were to pull it off. We've got no chance now, they really haven't. I think they've lost the shape completely. At least, uh, you know, two on the end of chance. 3-1. They decided to bring in one or two strikers. That just left them so open at the back. And when you've got good quality players who are very comfortable on the ball like Bournemouth are, they're going to have them opportunity to run at the, the two centre-halves. Butcher, we know, has not got the pace. You know, he's very good in the air, but if you run him, he can't change his, his, his angles quickly enough. And equally, his skipper alongside him, Paul Morgan, he's more renowned for his pass and his leadership qualities than his pace itself. Less than 30 minutes to go. And Lincoln fans who'd... Resolved to enjoy their day out no matter what happened in this, the club's first final of its kind in their 119-year history. Suddenly feeling a little more depressed about life an hour in. Simon Yeo hasn't managed to conjure the comeback, and now they're facing the most emphatic defeat experienced in a final of this nature. Well, that was a half a chance there. He had the confidence to strike it from distance, but the fans, uh, they've given in the thousands, hoping that has, their team could make it through to the second division. They've started brightly enough in the first half, but I think that goal just before half-time from Carl Fletcher, the heads dropped, and it was very difficult for Keith Alexander, the Lincoln manager, to get them up for the second half. Here's Cropper. And able to get it across. Blackpool scored four in a playoff final a couple of years ago, but since the final became a one-off match, no team has scored five in it. So there's something for Bournemouth to aim for under Sean O'Driscoll, who's still not showing too much emotion of a celebratory nature. Well, he won't. He's a, he's a professional. He knows what's required from his players, and that's to continue in the same vein of form they have for the second half. 
they've really dominated, haven't they? I mean, the goals have came at crucial times. I think they've been the better football inside. Mayo, scythe down by Elliott. Butcher is getting forward for the free kick. And it pushes direction. It's Mayo, away by Purchase. Hater away. Browning. Proper. That's Gulliver. There's times, you know, when you play with four up front, you get in each other's way. You know, they're, they're so flat as well, there's no movement to them. It's more on hope that they're going to get a knockdown and someone's going to, you know, strike one from distance to get in rather than getting wide. You know, you can see how narrow they're becoming as well at the moment. And that's just playing into the hands of Bournemouth, who, in, I, I believe in uh, Chris Fletcher and Phil Gulliver, the two of them have been very strong defensively to them. Cummings over the free kick. Blocked by Yeo. Hater. Butcher. Something to chase here against Carl Fletcher, and he's got the better of him. Cropper takes the extra touch, and Fletcher gets back in time. Just took too long, and he didn't Cropper. He had a tremendous opportunity to get his team back into the match, and, and should have done better. That's a gift for the goalkeeper. Well, what a huge chance that was for Cropper, who initially seemed to have got the better of Carl Fletcher. Well, he did, but Carl Fletcher, I think he got caught in two minds here. It's just the power and the pace of Cropper to get away from his man. Goes past Neil Moss like he is in there, but it just took too long. You know, he got caught in two minds, what to do? Yeah, just uh, completing a formality there, having been caught offside. Cropper still beating himself up over that miss. Carl Fletcher recovered. From the mistake of allowing the bounce and letting Cropper get through, got back into the right position. Well, he did in the end, but uh, I'm sure Sean O'Driscoll won't be happy with his defenders. You know, attributes earlier on exactly he was trying to do, let the ball bounce. He is a footballer, but there are occasions, you know, you've got to act like a defender, and that's clear your line. Make sure, you know, 4 1 up at the moment, you, you, you stay it, you know, with that goal line. Butcher. Bibson. He's won the free kick. It's Browning's tackle. That was a silly charge. Tackle from Marcus Browning. There's no way he's going to win this ball. He's just come in, look, sliding in, nowhere near the ball. Obviously going to bring Bimson down nice. You know, let his side down because the Lincoln City have got a free kick in a dangerous position. Coming back late to uh, join the defences in front of Neil Moss. Taken by Bailey. Well, it was on target, wasn't it, from Mark Bailey? But uh, should have really have harmed Neil Moss in the goal, and bouncing in front of him. There's not too much pace on it. Always looked it was just edging wide, but to the keeper's credit, got across very smartly indeed to, to handle it. again. Mayo. Elliot. For Steve Fletcher. Elliot. 
Browning. O'Connor off again. Steve Fletcher. Now Elliott. O'Connor's cross, and they've won a corner. They're all over the place at the moment defensively, Lincoln City, aren't they? I think they've been detailed men to pick up, but when you've got good movement like a corner who's playing wide on the left to find yourself on the right, no one's picking him up and he's got the chance to deliver the ball in. In the end, it was skipped by Paul Morgan, he got across, got his body in the way, put it in for a corner. For once, Steve Fletcher seems to have lost Ben Futcher as the corner's taken short. Tater's cross. Bournemouth at the moment revelling in the luxury that their lead affords them. What they've got to do now is just take this thing out of the game. There's no need for them to score any more goals. Just retain possession of the football, make Lincoln run around, and they'll just get even more tired, leave more gaps at the back, and then if they want to, they can exploit that and get more goals. Young's throw in. Browning just got underneath it with the shot. Good effort though, wasn't it? I think he's been excellent today, Marcus Browning. He's been the shield in, in front of Ben Futcher whenever the throw-ins or corners go into the box here. Shows the other side of his game, which is getting a strike at goal. Just got over the top of it slightly, and that just got the height and elevation and took it over the bar. And among those watching today, Lenny Lawrence, although I'm not sure how much he's able to enjoy it with tomorrow on his mind. Make sure you're with us for his Cardiff side against Queen's Park Rangers, a passionate second division final live on Sky Sports 1. Join us from 2 o'clock. And then the big one on Monday, the first division final as Sheffield United and Wolves bid for the last available place in the Premiership, live on Bank Holiday Monday against Sky Sports 1. Join us from 2. A good start to the uh, playoff weekend for Bournemouth, but uh, frustrated faces all around for... Lincoln at the moment, who came thinking that the prize was within their grasp. After a decent start to the game and a good recovery when they went a goal down, it's just got away from them now. This is Hayter. Barely playing for the free kick, making the most of it, certainly. What about that ball, though, from Carl Fletcher? Fully 60, 70 yards uh, from the right-hand side to the left. Touch from Hayter was decent, but uh, Mark Bailey, here's the ball, look at this. Fantastic ball over the top, spotting the run of James Hayter. Touch isn't too bad in the end. He just sees left arm come across, just grab Mark Bailey, and certainly it was a free kick. Just the merest of touches, but I tell you what, he made the most of that, didn't he? Carl Fletcher defending sensibly as Lincoln now line up another long throw in for which Futcher comes forward. Tamed in Futcher's direction. Away by Steve Fletcher. Hater. Here's Browning. Here's Purchase. Elliott has made a dart through the middle if he can pick him out. It's too long for him, though. What a break once again, though, Rob. That's what they've got great pace in the side as well. Fitness level is extremely high, and when they break that quickly, it's difficult for the, the Lincoln players to keep with them. You know, bit of ball in there from Purchase, but a found Elliott. It's in the middle of the goal there. Purchase just unable to provide the sort of service for Hater that was uh, provided for him on the break that led to his goal and put Bournemouth 3 1 up. who's been warned before. Is he going to get away with this one? He's been very lenient in the referee, hasn't he, as far as Mark Bailey's concerned, because if you remember in the first half, he had did one. Here's the challenge here. Good first touch from a corner, coming in from behind, nowhere near the ball. And that's three times in this game that uh, he's got away with the incidents like that. OK, they're making an allowance for the occasion. Nine, Bailey Cropper. gets away without uh, a booking. Dean Cropper is going to go off as Lincoln use their last substitute. Scott, uh, Willis. Scott Willis comes on to take his place. The last card that Keith Alexander can play in terms of the reserves he had there. Five outfield substitutes, he uh, didn't have a keeper on the bench. Not through not wanting to have one, just a genuine lack of resources. It 
looks as though the game has got away from his side now. And promotion very firmly within Bournemouth's grasp. Here's Gulliver. Young. Taken down by Mayo. Carl Fletcher. Hater. Elliot. Gulliver. Young coming in. 350th Bournemouth appearance for Young. Mayo. This is the only problem, you know, and because Fuchs is such a threat, you know, the, the free kicks are so slow and so deliberate, you know, there's occasion to get Ginker put that ball in, but waited and waited, you know. Stuart Vincent can forward to knock it in. And it's cleared, it falls here to Butcher. Blocked by Purchase. It's game. Cummings underneath it. Butcher. Willis. Still back up by Willis to Cornelli. Bailey! And Lincoln have something to hang on to. His first ever goal for the club. Fantastic call in though, wasn't it? From Connolly into the danger zone, and he's done well, the fullback he's got into the middle of the goal there, no one picking him up. Good football as well, it's good build-up play, Willis out to Connolly. Good left foot cross into the middle of the goal, that's a fabulous header from Mark Bailey, Neil Moss. Grasping at thin air, but it's a delightful ball in the header because he's going backwards to get the power and direction was first class. And you can just see here Neil Morse moving his feet across, gets his left fingernails to it. And can we see Lincoln getting back into this game? Well, Keith Alexander feels his side might have a chance now because Mark Bailey has scored his first goal for the club after 70 games for them. A free transfer signing from Northwich Victoria. Is it at the lifeline that Lincoln had craved? Suddenly the Bournemouth fans who might have thought they were cruising towards the second division will be feeling a little more anxious now. One thing, you know, you look at the Bournemouth, they've got a lot of young players out there, not used to being in the sport, they're not used to playing in circumstances like this. Well, I can't believe it. Is he ever booked him for the fur, or is it something that Paul Morgan has said after the challenge? But it just looked like he went in with Wade Elliott and won the ball, just put it out for a throw in. And the leniency that was shown earlier to Bailey, the man who's just scored the goal, not applied to the captain of Lincoln, and Morgan is booked. The challenges by, you know, Bailey were far worse than this one for Morgan, wasn't it? And now Bournemouth may just feel they need another goal. And it's O'Connor to take. And it's Carl Fletcher again! He's doubled his tally for the season in one game, and what a game in which to do it! Bournemouth 5-2 up, and it's their captain Marble who has them well on their way to the second division. What a response from Bournemouth. You think we could be under pressure for the last 15 minutes of the game after Lincoln made it 4-2, but a wonderful cross into the box. Markham was poor once again. He gets up above Mark Bailey, and Carl Fletcher, with the merest of touches on it, glances it past Alan Murray in the goal, and that must be good night as far as Lincoln City are concerned. Wonderful header from the skipper, just when they needed it most, to calm the nerves. 5-2 up, and Bournemouth look like they're heading to the second division. A goal just when they needed it. 
to put down the potential Lincoln revival. 5-2. I know we keep saying it, but surely no way back for Lincoln now. Keith Alexander wondering how it's got away again. Still Sean O'Driscoll sees plenty to make notes about. He's uh, possibly going to make a substitution here. Very understated Bournemouth uh, boss, who's actually uh, Wolverhampton born and bred. He may well be back here on Monday supporting Wolves in the first division final against Sheffield United. Purchase. Steered through his offside anyway, yo. Simon Yeo, who served in Bosnia and Northern Ireland in his time with the armed forces. And a really barren spell of seven months without a goal before his heroics at the end of the season, including in both legs of the semi-final. Here's Corneli. Still Yeo looking for a breakthrough, challenges Carl Fletcher, who's on a hat-trick now. He uh, saw his reaction to getting a second, much surprised there. Corneli... Well, he uh, went in strongly on that challenge, and uh, the referee just gives him a little talking to. A bit frantic last five minutes or so. <laughs> Lincoln score, boom, the score, the t tackles are flying in, there's a real edge to it at the moment. Big moment here for Brian Stock, who's born in Winchester, but actually qualifies to play for Wales through his grandmother. So the fact he's coming on now to take the place of Gareth O'Connor means that the Welsh under-21 international gets a run-out at the Millennium Stadium in Cardiff. Certainly as a player for the future, Brian Stock. Spoke to Sean O'Driscoll about him earlier in the season, said he's got a fantastic future ahead of him, you know, if he can keep his feet on the ground. Very good footballer indeed. And he, you know, back in Wales, I'm sure he wants to put a good performance today. Well, Steve Fletcher's header on. James Hayter is described by Steve Fletcher as the best finisher at the club. Hasn't had any real opportunities in this game today. His movement's been first class, hasn't it? It really has been a thorn in the, the back four or back five on occasions with Lincoln. Very elusive, hard to pick him up. You know, who, who you de do you detail to, to actually pick him up from situations? Because he's, he's very quick indeed. And you know, the two set halves uh, for Lincoln City aren't the quickest, that isn't the strength. It's Gulliver. Is that a shot? Why not? 5 2 up. And everybody wants to be a hero. And this, of course, is likely to be Gulliver's last game for the club as his lone spell from Middlesbrough runs out. of the second division Bournemouth they were relegated after a last day defeat at Wrexham last season but now Bournemouth and Wrexham could both be returning at the first attempt he's worked unbelievably hard to the end Steve Fletcher probably didn't realize how how much running he was had to do in this game, you know, as he was trying to get forward, you know, as a striker, but most of his work has been on the defensive side of things, going back every time Ben Futcher goes forward. That's Carl Fletcher. Here's Pimson. Yeo just coming back into an onside position. He's bumped Young out of the way. And the cross was by Willis, and this is Corneli. And Mayo's in there to challenge. Yeo was coming in as well around the back. 
just needed to give him a call there, Yeo. You know, it was a lovely ball in once again, once again from Connelly. Oh, out there on that right-hand side, whips out his left foot to the far post. He just has to call Paul Mail. You know, my ball, and it was a, a free shot to go there. 3-2, 1-4-8. They're aiming to bring at least 15,000 from each here, and they've done well. Over 32,000, which is a record for this divisional playoff final in Cardiff. Yeah. Yeah. Another record set as well. It's the highest scoring match here at the Millennium Stadium. Of injury here, isn't he? Carl Fletcher. I don't know if it's a bit of cramp. Certainly, he's old and he's left. Left foot there. He's in for the challenge here. I think it's inside and Yule. Wins the ball. It was an excellent challenge, but uh, maybe feeling the effects of the match here. We can see him going in with the challenge. It's a good one as well. Wins the ball. Just as he gets to go up there, I just think it's a bit of cramp. Just holding his calf muscle there certainly is cramp. That's why he was trying to, uh, you know, just move his foot around. Been in that position myself, Rob, on many occasions. <laughs> it is very sore. At the same time, Steve Fletcher also seemed to be uh, suffering with cramp. Fletcher's headed back. Cleared by Elliott. Here's Gain. Now Elliott. Just went over there for a, a word with Sean O'Driscoll. It's not him going off, though, it's Steve Fletcher. And what a reception he's getting, absolutely revelling his, his game today. Former through and through, as you quite rightly said, Rob, been at the club for nearly 11 years. He's had his injury problems over the last couple of seasons, but he's a vital player for this side. The leader up front, the physical presence, and today's have been the physical presence in both, not only the Lincoln box, but his own box as well. Holmes, who was signed having initially been on loan from Ross County, finishes the match up front with James Hayter. But Bournemouth now less than five minutes plus stoppage time away from reclaiming their place in the second division. Reclaiming it from the team that was the only side to beat them in their five matches coming into this final. Elliot. Stock. Well, it's a fantastic turnaround this season for Sean O'Driscoll, who was put under real public pressure earlier in the season when they didn't have the best of starts, weren't losing too many matches, to be fair, drawing a lot, but his chairman did publicly threaten that if they weren't in a certain position by a certain time, he would be out of a job, and to show the resolve he has and to come back with the result he looks like getting is a fantastic achievement. I think he had six games, Rob. That was where he had to change it, the, the, the fortunes of the club around, and certainly he did that. Spoke to big Steve Fletcher the other week, and what he said was, there are occasions, you know, when they have, you know, meals at the club at lunchtime. Sean pays for that out his own, own money, and that's, you know, the feeling and what it means to, to him, this Bournemouth club. Well run back by Stock, who gets it back from Elliott. Morgan away. Mayo looking to set Yeo away. He managed to stay on side that time, but he just couldn't take it in his stride. First touch let him down, and it should have been in front of him. Just flicked up his heel behind him, and that gave Carl Fletcher the chance to get back and clear it up. Here's Young.
Here's Carl Fletcher. Tired challenge from Phil Gulliver. I mean, he got across uh, the pitch very well indeed and got his foot in, but uh, got up very weakly indeed. Bailey. Cornelius cross. Yeo! And Mayo off the bar! Well, they can't believe that one stayed out. What a miss that was. In from Bailey, here goes for it, but he went for it with his arm. I'll tell you what, though, but this Connolly, he's put some absolutely fantastic balls into the box, isn't he? You <laughs> can't believe his luck here. Here it is once again, it's a delightful ball into the near post. In the end, Neil Moss does well to just flick the ball up there because it looked like it was going in. Neil, he's just got to hit the target, anything low, keeper's got no chance, goes for a height. Hits off the crossbar, and you can see his reaction afterwards. Absolutely distraught, he hasn't scored. He wouldn't have really meant anything in the game, I don't think. You know, Lincoln Cobra got back in a bit. A great memory for him, playing and scoring in a, in a final. Well, after the season that they have had, it would have been nice in many respects to see them finish with a flourish, because they did say prior to this game, come what may today, they should take great pride in what they've achieved, and that does still stand, despite the fact that Keith Alexander's side looked like finishing on the wrong end of a 5-2 scoreline, at least. Willis trying to drive it back in. That's that bell there, I think it was from Stock on Connolly. And, uh, well, who knows, maybe they can get something out of it at the end, a bit of pride anyway. I mean, 5-2 really does... You know, sure, true reflection of the game. Bournemouth have been very good at the start of the, the second half, but to the credit, Lincoln have battled and battled and they've created chances. Unfortunately, they haven't taken them. Willis and Pritchard await. Vincent tries his luck, tests the goalkeeper direct. So kindly. It was easy in the end, wasn't it? Straight at him virtually. Not well. An awful lot of power in this. Went for accuracy here, whips it in to the near post, but it was then. There'll be five minutes of stoppage time. It's a minimum of five minutes. So maybe that'll uh, give Lincoln a little bit of hope. It's a long period in which for uh, Lincoln to chip away at this lead. Ball in, header from Futcher. Just could get the direction on it there, could he? Can keep the ball down, just a little bit too high for him. He's still smiling away, isn't he, Keith Alexander? He's proud of his players and what they've achieved this season. It's a decent ball in from Mayo to Ben Futcher, but just couldn't keep the ball down, just got a bit of elevation in over the bar. Well, Danny Thomas is going to come on for what remains of stoppage time. Only played three games in the Premiership for Leicester, coming on at the expense of Wade Elliott. He is being replaced by 22. It's a case of wasting some time and giving the young lads a bit of experience. You know, what an occasion to come in and play in. He's been sitting there watching the match, you know, hoping and praying at the manager at some stage. We say, look, here's your opportunity to go out there, even if it is for the next three or four minutes. Just go out there and express yourself. As mayor. Gulliver going in a little strong on Simon Yeo. Dimson's kick. Here's Cornelli. Game. Willis. Chris Cornelli looking to steer one through for Yeo. And Simon, uh, Carl Fletcher 
Sort of guided back to his goalkeeper, and the Lincoln fans were questioning whether he actually caught Yeo. And judging by that exchange, Yeo clearly feels that there was some contact. And equally, Carl Fletcher thought he dived, you know, because he's. And look at this for a lovely ball over the top from Canelli. Away goes Simon Yeo. Look at that, Fletcher just holding him off. I've seen them given as well, you know, he's not played the ball, you know, he's, the ball's three or four yards away, I mean, he's, he's trying to just, you know, usher the ball out, but he's got his arm up, and Yeo fell, fell over the challenge from Carl Fletcher. It's Bimson's cross. Yeo yeah, again looking to turn sharply on it. That was Hayter. Now Browning. Stopped by Morgan, this is Futcher. Here's Stock. Holmes. Thomas. He didn't look the young man there, did he? He got himself in a good position down that left-hand side. They just whipped it in without looking to see who was in the box. Yes. Now Cornelli. Deflected behind by Thomas for a corner. And Lincoln looking at least to finish off their season in style. It looks like the last ticket for the second division will be claimed by their opponents, but can they at least add a respectable gloss to the scoreline? Mayo climbing. Ironic, isn't it, that uh, the best defensive record in the division, the third best defensive record in all four divisions, and they should concede five goals in this, their final game of the season. The third division playoff final proving just a bridge too far for a Lincoln team that had been so resilient in their previous 52 matches. Gaines ball that's played in there. And it's headed behind by Young, which buys Bournemouth a bit more time. The referee's already taken one check on the watch. Mayo's kick. Willis. They've got a deflection on its way through. Off Carl Fletcher, I think, who... Uh, no, in fact, it was off Yeo. And Bournemouth have bounced back into the second division at the first attempt. A proud moment for Sean O'Driscoll, who side have beaten Lincoln by five goals to two to reclaim their place at the higher level. A modest man put under huge pressure earlier in the season when results weren't going their way. But today, Carl Fletcher, their captain, their 23-year-old captain, led from the front and was a two-goal hero in this 5-2 win. A convincing win in the end, although on a couple of occasions they had to put down threatened revivals. Carl Fletcher gave them a 2-1 lead after Steve Fletcher's initial goal had been cancelled out by Ben Butcher. They then established a 4-1 advantage through Purchase and O'Connor before Bailey just made them think a little, pulling it back to 4-2. It was Carl Fletcher's second that rounded it all off. A moment to think about the losers, Lincoln, who battled bravely and done so well, even to get themselves into this position, go away as the disappointed team in their first major final in their history spanning 119 years. But the celebrations are for Bournemouth. Steve Fletcher says bring on Hartlepool next season, he's gone up with his hometown club. He certainly has, and uh, he, he absolutely adores Alibur. Well, that's what it means, there's got to be a winner, there's got to be a loser. We can just see the goalkeeper, Alan Murray, there are tears in his eye. That's what it means to, to the club, to the players. You know, all your hopes and dreams were on this match today. You're looking to get through to the second division. Unfortunately, it wasn't to be. You can't bolt them for their effort, the commitment that they showed today. I just feel that they were beaten by a better football inside, and you've got to give Sean O'Driscoll and Carl Fletcher, the captain of Bournemouth, with two goals today, and that was an absolutely fantastic first. Right, let's hear from the Bournemouth captain, Carl Fletcher with Fraser Robertson. Carl, your reaction to this tremendous victory? Oh, unbelievable, unbelievable, can't believe it.
Uh, you know, players like us is what we dream of. So to come here and win it in that style, it's, it's unbelievable. But, uh, you know I mean, to get two goals as well. But the team, the lads today were brilliant. Lincoln, you know, great side, made it hard for us. We had to dig in right to the end. And, uh, but thankfully we got there in the end. The first team in playoff final history to score five goals. Really? Tremendous achievement. Uh, yeah, we've done well, you know. Took our chances when we had them. Um, some of our, you know, attacking play on the break was, was really good. Um, and hopefully now we can just go and enjoy it. And for you, you've only had one goal in 42 league appearances before today, two in the final. I know, I know. I was getting a bit of stick off the other lads because not scoring that much. But uh, thankfully I got two today. But at the end of the day, I don't care who scores as long as we win. And the other Fletcher, ah! Steve. You described before this game the semi-final performance is awesome. What about that performance today? It was just a goal route, wasn't it? Uh, we didn't know where we were coming or going at times. We didn't play particularly well first half. Quite fortunate to come in at 2-1. Lucky enough to grab the goal myself, but the other Fletcher ended up getting two, so he's going to get the limelight. But it was a great day. It's a shame it couldn't have been closer, I mean, for Lincoln. I don't think 5-2 really represented the full game. Maybe a bit second half, we, uh, we pulled the plug a little bit on them. And when that goal went in 4-2, a bit of a jitters and... When we got back to five, I think we settled down, we played some good football towards the end, and this is fantastic, like I say, for a young, a young side like us, and people like myself will never come back here again, maybe. Um, so we're going to enjoy the moment, and fantastic, I can't believe it. What does it say about the character of the players to get an immediate return after relegation? Well, you can prepare what you want all season, and after relegation, usually the team that goes down don't do particularly well, uh, by all accounts. But we battled on, we were a bit disappointed we didn't get automatic uh, in them top three. This is the best, best next thing I said to you a week ago. I said, if you can go through the playoffs, the euphoria that goes with it, it's absolutely fantastic, is the best way to go. I was listening to Steve Cotter in the studio, a good mate of mine, last night, and he's, he's right, 100%. This is absolutely amazing. I'm going to relish it. I'm going to go and try and get my little girl, Danny, out from the stand and take her on the stadium. Well done. Enjoy the evening. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Well, he has every right to enjoy it, and there is his daughter, who he's going to try and get down to be part of the celebrations as they look to make this a family occasion. They've seen Dad... I've been in a similar situation myself, Rob. I lost it with uh, Crystal Palace against Leicester many, many years ago, and you think, you know, that's the end of it. You know, you're going to have a sample of that atmosphere again. Fallen season, we won it. We beat Sheffield United. It was absolutely fantastic. Well, the work rate, Marcus Browning had a huge influence today. Let's hear from him with Fraser Robertson. Marcus, you've been a losing playoff finalist. How does it feel to be a winner? Oh, absolutely brilliant. Um, we knew it was going to be a tough game today. Um, we done our homework on this pitch. We knew we could pass it around and get at them, so it was a great result for us. Was the key moment scoring just before half time? I think so. You know, they got one back, and they were getting on top a little bit. But when we got the other goal, went in half time, two one up. We knew we, we knew we, we were nearly there. Linking up with the best defensive record in the league coming into this, what does that say about your achievement today? Yeah, you know, the lads have been brilliant, different class all season. Um, it's about time we beat someone sort of four or five nil. It's, it's been coming, so at long last we got it. And for the club, hopefully put the financial side in order with the talent you've got here onwards and upwards. Yeah, that's right. We've got some great young lads, as you've seen today, great players, and hopefully we can keep hold of them and go do well in Division 2. Well, for your performance today, Marcus, you are the nationwide man of the match. Well played. Thanks a lot. Cheers. Brilliant. Thank you. Well deserved for Marcus Browning as he walks away with the champagne. Oh, definitely. I thought he was excellent today, he really did. I mean, he was the shield in, in front of Fucho whenever balls came into the box. He won numerous headers, he won his tackles in midfield. He was the driving force for the first goal. It was a lovely ball. He nodded it back for Steve Fletcher to whip it in. He was well, all over the pitch. Bear in mind, this was a lad only 10 days ago, so weren't, wasn't going to play. He wasn't fit enough to play. Sean O'Driscoll took a gamble, played him in the semi semi-final second leg and he's came up trumped from today once again these scenes are first class and as a player you've got your revelness remember what it's all about because this is all part and parcel of being a, a professional footballer Sean O'Triscoll can take great art from us he's been absolutely magnificent and he's gave these players the, the freedom to go out there and express themselves go out there and perform to their highest ability didn't quite happen in the first 30 minutes or so but after that they were first class and I think in the end deserve to win the match scoreline might have to flatter them, but I thought it was an excellent all-round performance. Well, they'd operated for 12 years at the higher level Bournemouth before relegation last year, but what a difference 12 months makes. A year on, here they are celebrating in Cardiff, and Sean O'Driscoll steps forward to accept the congratulations from Nationwide's official at the game, Robin Bailey, 
and to take his medal. Well deserved for a man who conducted himself with great dignity, even when he was under the greatest pressure earlier in the campaign. Neil Moss, Warren Cummings, who wondered if he would have a part to play in this game yesterday when he twisted an ankle in training. Purchase one of the goal scorers that made up this 5-2 win. Marcus Browning, who has the man of the match, Champagne, to go away with his medal. But these playoff finals, unique, because the trophy at the end of it is mere window dressing. As Keith Alexander knows, the real prize is the sort of places that you're going to next season after promotion and the fact that as professionals you're operating at a higher level. His players have showed great dignity though, haven't they? And Keith Alexander, you've got to make special mention of that. A lot of players after you've been beaten, the last thing you want to do is sit and watch the opposition go up there and take the medals, take the plaudits, and, they, and you're sitting there thinking, if only that could have been us, you want to get into the dressing room, start to feel a little bit sorry for yourself, and start even thinking, you know, what about next season? Carl Fletcher lifts the playoff final trophy in a year when he's been made team captain, when he was player of the year, he got two goals in the playoff final. Does it ever get any better than this? He's 23 years of age. He'll have to hope it does because he set himself quite a high standard here in Cardiff this afternoon. And the celebrations begin. The smoke drifts away from the fireworks. And Carl Fletcher hopes that this is just the start of something special for him and for Bournemouth. A supporter when they were played in the auto windscreen final when Steve Fletcher was playing in the defeat by Grimsby five years ago. But today the outcome is very different and the prize is even greater because it restores Bournemouth's second division status. Wade Elliott can look forward to playing in division two again next season. The contemplation as to who will survive, who will be able to play at the higher level, what changes will have to be made to the squad, they can all wait. Bournemouth for now have to enjoy this moment and they've every right to enjoy this moment because they've won the third division playoff final beating Lincoln City by five goals to two.